This is probably the best use of a crate I've ever seen at Bangkok Airport. Banging, green finger banging. You gotta feel it to heal it. This is me working with an idea called hashtag dance with your emotions created by one of my tantricorns, Chelsea Bellacorn. This is where you move your emotions around through the power of dance. Dinner. I'm gonna go and inspire and dance for the full moon. So uh, I was showing off, minding my own business, um, with my star. I'm gonna ask this lady, what happened? Well, we were watching his lovely staff dance and all of a sudden, boom, over the side of the day unobstructed. I basically lost half my stuff. I'm doing my light warrior call meditation with this in Bali. I don't have my double-ended rainbow love saber anymore. But on the plus side, I found this. What is your name, unicorn brother? I'm doing this. <laughs> I just met a unicorn. The tantricorn has landed. So I've gone full hippie. My mantra for this year is abundance and flow. So I've rocked up to Koh Phangan full moon here there isn't anywhere to live i've not booked anything but i really want a room with a wi-fi and a bed stolen wi-fi from here found a bed on the beach Ta -da! so you stare into the center of it yeah so it's full moon and, then when... and we're doing a special shiva ritual go to, go to the outside periphery mm -hmm. switch off your mobile i asked the full moon for pussy and i got it <laughs> it's a vegan disco. Oh, yes, a love train. <laughs> it's day 10. I've just enrolled into Agama's erotic rituals course. Um, I basically go on people's recommendations, and everyone has described it as a sex cult. I love a good sex cult. I mean, I've been described in The Guardian and Vice as a sex cult leader. Um, I mean, the best quote I've heard about myself is uh, if one person thinks something crazy, they call him delusional. If a group of people think something crazy, they call it a cult. If society thinks something crazy, they call it fact. Who's a crazy one, huh? I used to have a lover. She used to turn into Carly every time we made love. Go into a tantric state and then Carly would embody her. And that's when my Shiva in me would come into me. And then I used to hold her until we got into a state of non-movement. I mean, when I say she turned into Carly, she would be literally like, <sighs> and my Shiva me would be like, and then we'd go into another dimension. Um, just had that validated uh, in our course. There's a whole magic spell you do with mudras and everything that activate and allow the divine to come in. And uh, yeah, quite like that. I didn't know it was a thing. It's an actual tantric thing. Fit. Shiva! 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 My name is Dan. I have just done a reading on our friend Shaft. Shaft wants to know about what validation he needs from the external world to become a man pimp of healing power. What we have found this all resonates very strongly with Shaft, is that he is on a journey where he has basically faced this shattering of his belief system and construct the beginning of a new journey. He set off in motion actions and an investment that will come back to him in the end. He believes that his future, his future is in a completion where by there are women and there is abundance and there is beauty and there is utopia, but it's a false, false end. There is more. The magician in Shaft, as he sees himself, is powerful, very powerful to the point of being able to control the external world and have a lot of influence on it. The Hierophant is how people see him. People see Shaft as someone who knows a lot, who is at the cusp of human knowledge and pushing that boundary and spreading it through education. And his fears are a fear of failure on one end 
or success by going through the hard path and making it through. Shaft's outcome is that he will be single-minded, he will be determined, he will be dogged in pursuing his career fanatical. What does that say about the external validation that he needs? He doesn't need it, but he doesn't yet feel that in him. And so, he's going to come back around full circle and realize the foundation of the problem was that it, the riches that he seeks, are all in him. All the answers lie within. That's what I always say. The most incredible thing just happened to me. I activated my Kundalini twice during a, a workshop. Uh, we did this self-love so, oops. Um, we did a self-love exercise where you had to lie down on the floor, bash the base of your sacrum on the ground, uh, like dry hump in the air basically, and then touch yourself afterwards. Um, I did that, built up, built up the energy in my spine, and then I started breathing in my tantric way, then I started doing all these mudras, which is what I usually do when I go tantric. And then I started like getting my breath higher and higher, and then it released the... Um, the Kundalini in me, so I started shaking, uh, and then I was like, oh my god, oh my god, and then I started having a laughgasm, which is a form of release, you could have cryogasms, orgasms, I call these rainbowgasms, uh, and then I uh, started tripping balls, I saw Shiva, he comes to me quite often, I saw him, and I said, thank you, and he said, I love you, and then we hugged each other, it was so beautiful. And then I thought, and then we had to carry on with the exercise and like touch yourself. I thought, I want more. So I did it again, I activated it again. So now I can actually activate my own Kundalini by myself without making love to someone or having a gong meditation or having some electrical equipment all over me. So now I have my own little unlimited source of energy that I could self pleasure myself with. And we've all got this. Who needs caffeine when you got kundalini who needs cocaine when you got kundalini your body has all the stuff it needs <laughs> i'm jay and i'm here with shaft we just had a water flow session and i um dragged him through the water for about uh, 15 20 minutes above and then under doing spins and turns and getting him to relax and completely release everything release the body, release the emotions, release the mind. So I faced a few of my biggest fears, which is uh, being naked with a man, and um, and the ocean, I can't swim, I have dense bones, so I drown. Um, and it was the most incredible experience. But that was beautiful, I was in a meditative state, and uh, for the first time I didn't have to use my legs or think or anything, I was completely entrusted with you, and it was, Beautiful. The water dance massage meditation, all in one. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Google Leila Martin sex magic and you'll find out what we've been studying here pretty much. It's something I've been doing for a while. Um, for me, sexual energy is the most powerful thing on the planet. It's the thing that is the driving force. Um, and you could use that energy to set intentions uh, and manifest anything that you desire, but done correctly. Um, mm. We just did a, a whole day on it basically on, on this uh, tantric rituals course and it's fascinating I do love the fact that I'm just channeling shit and uh, it's being validated on courses that I'm doing so there is something I'm tapping into out there which is probably the collective consciousness or something again I'm still new to this world but definitely getting something from up there and uh, and it's a thing <laughs> Everything's a thing, which I found out. Um, so yeah, never waste an orgasm. This is what I say. By far my favorite seafood place on the planet. Crustacean Station. Michael Day, Psychedist Stars, predicted some stuff uh, during the full moon. Uh, check out the link below for my first chapter of uh, my little travels. Let's just say it kind of came true in the form of many different women. <laughs> Shiva, he's played a big influence in my life since uh, my Opening. Uh, this one time on DMT, I saw him. Hiya! High five to that, Shiva. Um, basically, I love him. Um, what's not to love? He's buff, he's blue, he loves tiger print, and we both have the Dolson top knot. Banging. So, basically, I've learned how to channel him and embody him. During my time on psychosexual somatic therapy, I actually saw him come into me whilst we were doing a certain 
ceremony where um, a woman was having was heavy triggered all the women nurtured her gave her feminine energy and all the men had to hold um, hold space for them and then I saw him literally walk into me and then I felt him embodied in me and ever since then I've been able to channel him during making love during when I'm in service for my sacred sexual awakening or, or when I'm doing my tantricorn workshops or when I'm a tantricorn itself so a Shiva Check him out, people worship his penis, it's really great. What's not to like? I love you. He loves me. <sighs> totally late for my uh, final ritual. It's like if they tried to make the road worse. No, I know why they... So Stefano in Spain, in Mexico, just gets out of jail. The guards love them so much that they let them out of jail, give them all their drugs back, and they meet Oliver at the 7-Eleven. And that is my first time meeting Shaft, which is fucking amazing, absolutely fucking amazing. It's all true, on Boxing Day I got arrested, put into prison, and I channeled Bridget Jones and made everyone turn fabulous. What do we want? Toilet parkour! Pow! <laughs> we were trapped in paradise due to the weather. That was fun. Day 19 and it's all over. Here's a little rundown on the most transformative effects in my life. Um, starting with this one time at Burning Man. Um, that basically showed me a world where scarcity and consumption doesn't exist. So the world that we live in now doesn't have to be the one that we live in. Um, Burning Man is all about freedom and gifting. Ayahuasca, I learned how to love myself and my life as a light warrior corn began because of the visions I saw. The new tantra that basically activated my kundalini so I don't ejaculate anymore. All the energy goes up, so I collect that shit. And um, I've reconnected back to my masculine core. I've basically spent my entire life in my feminine shell all my life, being all fabulous. Living Tantra, that taught me um, to see the beauty in everyone. Psychosexual somatic therapy, that taught me how to ground myself and channel Shiva. ISTA, International School of Temple Arts Level 1, showed me playing small doesn't serve the world. I need to shine as I always shine because uh, it helps everyone else shine around me. It's the level two, um, taught me how, or taught me my life purpose. This is why I've quit my career uh, after seeing my visions inside this cave underneath Hawaii with loads of sex magic, with menstrual blood and semen, with 40 other people. That's my life. And now Agama. That taught me the power of consecration, power of prayer, um, how to be touched by grace and let the divine Shiva and Shakti flow through me when I'm in service and give up all my energy to raise the vibration and give up to the collective consciousness. So now is my new life. So I've decided to stay in Thailand. Let's see what abundance and flow happens now. Bringing back conscious snogging to conscious clubbing. 